like there is a lot of knowledge uh, that is out there and I would like to uh, give you some overview on how this whole ecosystem of WASM looks like and where we are and that should give you the idea what we should be doing as a community further. Uh, all right, so uh, I'll be talking about smart contracts, uh, a bit of solidity, we'll go into how the WASM looks like and then what are the different WASM uh, virtual machines, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get this when we are there, and uh, what's the future. And that's me. Uh, so I'm software engineer for 12 years in blockchain for six. I started at Casper Labs four years ago. I worked there two and a half years. Then, uh, and then I formed my own uh, Odra Dev that is behind the Odra framework, the, the framework for writing contracts on Casper. Yeah, the <laughs> thing is that a lot of people are saying, oh, this is some magic programming. No, it's not. It's super simple code. And if you are a Rust developer, there's no such thing like, oh, I don't know how to code smart contracts. Yes, you do. You just need to read a bit of documentation and, and you can code. What it does, it reads from the input and writes to the output as a normal program. And uh, in general, smart contracts are executed against uh, the host. And the host could be a virtual machine, it could be your computer, it could be your browser. Uh, so we just provide an interface between a host, whatever it is, and the smart contract. And the contract, the program can do things like reading the input and outputting the output. Uh, fun fact, smart contracts, uh, for the blockchains are distributed as a WASM files. We've just seen the, the presentation about the WASM files. This is like in the old time dot uh, .exe files, dot .ddl files, dot .so files. We just have our own and uh, there is a bytecode inside that does stuff. Uh, yeah, and another piece is that we should be also thinking that smart contracts not, not necessarily need to be on the blockchain. That should be designed and built in a way that can be executed on your local machine in the browser. That's because many times uh, you have your logic, your business logic that like took you lo lots of time to develop in the code of smart contract. And later on the browser, for example, you want to reuse this logic to present something, for example, I don't know, to to have the right ordering of elements uh, and you should not be required, should not need to re-implement it in JavaScript. If that's the thing, then it's bad. Uh, then you lose time, uh, error can occur, problems, bugs, uh, you're in trouble. So, so it should be like that. And another piece, writing smart contracts is very similar to embedded programming. I don't know if anyone we work with embedded stuff. Uh, this is not computers, these are just like small chips that do stuff. And you send the code, you don't really know what's happening. You just can read the output. Uh, so there is like various techniques of writing low level programming, uh, embedded programs that can be applied. And that's basically to cut the, the computation and to make your program much faster. Okay. So what are the common host side functions? So what, are, what can the smart contract do? So let's, let's see if you know what contracts do. Who knows? Miha, what, what does the program do? Uh, compute hash. Compute hash, what else? Read from state. Read from state, what else? Any other ideas? Uh, All right, I'll, I'll just show you. Uh, so. We need to manually load arguments if, if you were passing to the contract. Uh, we read from local storage, write to local storage. We return the data, so after the computation is done, we, we're sending something, so we need to do this manually. Emitting events, which is uh, during the execution of the problem, program, we, like the program itself, 
reports what it does, what it, what it did. Uh, so later it can be reused for the presentation in, in a browser, for example. Calling another contract. Your contract needs to interact with another contract that has its own state, its own logic. Um, native assets in the blockchain are the thing. You need to have ways to, to send tokens, receive tokens. Uh, different blockchains have different ideas how to do this. And hashing and zero knowledge proof verification is the thing now, uh, very important. Okay, what is this so important? Smart contract concept on itself drives the innovation of the blockchain technology. Building a blockchain is a hard thing. It takes a long time uh, and it can be, and the blockchains these days with visual machines can be seen as a cloud platform. You create a program, you send it to the cloud and it executes. And the, the whole innovation, maybe not the whole, but the lot of innovation happens on, the, on this layer, not on the blockchain because on the blockchain, it takes time to, to release new version to adjust. So blockchain itself enables smart contracts and better blockchain, better contracts. But the contract itself is the thing behind the whole revolution because we can quickly introduce new versions and build new, new products. The most successful smart contract language that is used for smart contracts is Solidity. Uh, I, I want to show you why this is important to, to know a bit about Solidity, uh, to figure it out how and to have a framework on thinking about WASM. Okay, so what are the good parts about Solidity? It is designed for smart contracts. It means that your code can be short and easy uh, because you have a built-in element in the language that allows you to interact with the storage, with reading the data and all the things that I showed. Uh, it has really nice uh, way of sharing your code. So someone can create libraries that can be reused. In Solidity is done through inheritance. Uh, it's okay, it, it does the job. Uh, because of all of that, it was very successful. And that means there's a lot of code, it was used a lot, that means it's safer, and it repeats, more people use it, so there's like this cycle. And the thing is that Solidity is important because before Solidity, there were smart contracts and the, the prime, uh, sorry, languages that uh, weren't that successful. There was Serpent, for example. And also after Solidity, there are new languages for EVM that are not that successful. So, so Solidity like hit the point, that was good enough, and that's it. And we, we stuck with this, like we stuck with, for example, you know, Java. Yeah, and uh, it's important to understand that all of this and the, the thing that it was super easy to write and still is, contracts in Solidity was the key factor of the Ethereum popular, uh, popularity. So if you're designing your WASM system, you need to, need to think about it, that your system should be super, super easy so it can be successful. And what's bad about Solidity? It is designed for smart contracts. That means uh, you can reuse the codes anywhere else. And uh, that's, that's a huge problem. And uh, even if you want to reuse it in another VM, it's also problematic. It's designed for EVM. And as I stated earlier, uh, it can be, used, uh, can be used for blockchains only, which requires logic re-implementation outside the blockchain, which means logic in JavaScript on the browser. And our main actor, WebAssembly. This is a virtual machine that's different than EVM. And uh, there is many blockchains uh, on EVM, but, what, uh, but I'll, I'll get to that. What is WebAssembly? It's a binary format for a virtual machine that was designed. So we have a list of opcodes. And the good part is that it is a target for compilation for many languages. So you can write your code in C, C++, Rust, C Sharp, Go, Python, and others, compile to WebAssembly bytecode, and then another good part, execute against many different virtual machines. Some virtual machines are faster, some, some not. Uh, 
and then only virtual machine executes it on your physical machine. Okay, so who's using WebAssembly? Blockchain, Stellar, Solana, Polkadot, Near, Cosmos, Casper, Arbitrum, they all use WebAssembly uh, for as their smart, co smart contracting claim framework and system. And that was a dream from 2018-19 to have blockchain, successful blockchains that has WebAssembly. And we have, we have them now. And now we have to look at how it works, how it looks like these days, and move forward. So, uh, but the thing is, uh, we have blockchains that are successful, that, uh, but each of these blockchain, apart from Solana, had to build uh, their own uh, tool chain for us, and they have their own ideas how to build the system. Uh, so basically, even that we have WebAssembly everywhere here, it's different WebAssembly. It's not like in this EVM where every system has the same EVM. These are web assemblies, but they're different web assemblies. I'll get that in a minute. In browsers, like all those guys got together and actually built the web assembly. So that's why we 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 still in blockchain this is a virtual machine I need to use. Uh, but web assembly is so successful that it's even used as a containerization uh, on servers. So a lot of software is shared uh, as a was in bytecode so, and reuse in the cloud. Okay, so the, the misconception about Solana was that it was possible to write in Rust, uh, and uh, I thought that was WebAssembly, sorry. But the thing is that the most successful toolchain for WebAssembly smart contracts is Rust these days for the blockchain, uh, language of choice, because a lot of blockchains is implemented, in fact, in Rust. And because Rust is actually good language for smart contracts, it allows you to build large projects. That's not the thing with Solidity. In Solidity, when you have, or even in JavaScript, if you want to build large projects, lack of certain features of language prevents you from that, and you get into the messy situation, and that's problematic. So you need to have, for example, static type, uh, like a strong typing uh, that you get from Rust and other things. So Rust. It's good choice. And now we get to the code. Uh, OK, so let's say I want to build a WASM in Rust. Uh, this is the program. This is the full program. It, it goes like this. Uh, that's going to be a binary without main. So there's no standard entry point. And we will import, because we are in the host, we, uh, we expect the host to provide low argument and store result functions. And that's it. And what we will expose to the host, so the host can call it, is a function that adds one to value provided by the load argument. And this function will store result uh, so number plus one. Is it clear? Kind of simple. Someone knows how to code just a bit. It makes sense. And this is what is the output. So this is the byte code. This is called what? WebAssembly text format. Uh, and this is the, the full code that was generated from this. So let me walk you through. All right. So first, everything in WASM is a module. I have three types defined uh, first. Uh, that's going to be used later. And look, this is the type of a function that uh, results with i32 and the type of a function that takes one parameter and the type of a function that doesn't do anything. This does, does, like not do, doesn't do anything, but doesn't accept a value and don't return the value, just, just executes the logic. Then I have those two functions, load argument and store result, are defined here. So this, this file says I expect to load an, uh, a function to, from the host of this type, so type zero, so that matches our load argument. Then I have this fu function defined in the bytecode as a stack machine code. Then we have, a, uh, we need to define a table for functions. We need to define the memory. Uh, and we have some globals that defines how our memory is structured, so where's the heap. 
uh, and the, the yeah. So basic, but this is defined as a, as the numbers that like uh, point uh, at, the, at the at the memory. And the last piece are exports. And this is export. Look, we export the memory, so we're giving away the the memory from our virtual machine that executes it, uh, so it can be written to. So uh, we export one function and we export two values that define where our uh, data is stored in the memory. So that was that's basically how your WASM systems look like these days and. It, of course, get, can get much more complicated when your functions are complicated. But what gets complicated is the body of these functions itself. And the structure is, is pretty, pretty okay. Okay. But the thing is uh, that this, no one wants to write this code. It's very low level. You want to have high level code that gives you structures, that give you nice flows. So this is, this is what uh, different libraries tend to uh, provide to users. So this looks more like a code. Um, so here, look, we, we have a struct that has some, some value in it. So that's representation of the memory. And we have some function, add one, it's actually the same, that expect, expects one argument and can, uh, can save it to the result. So more or less, more system, uh, all Rust systems for smart contracts provide you with something like that. Of course, under the hood, there is a lot of things that uh, works totally, totally different. Because blockchain WASM VMs are different. So they have different set of functions. So for example, one, one system loads function this way, the other that way. Uh, all the communication is done through bytes because that's the only interface we have. So you need to serialize and deserialize your data. And again, different blockchain, different data serialization format. And of course, different memory management. And I mean the memory uh, inside your blockchain, sorry, inside your virtual machine. Sometimes when you allocate uh, the variable, uh, you can use different memory locators, different memory structures. Uh, sometimes you have like full access to do it manually. Sometimes uh, framework does it for you. So it comes with all shapers. Also, gas model makes it makes it different for every virtual machine. Sometimes in one virtual mach virtual machine, for example, you pay a lot for if statement. So you might optimize your code not to have if statement. So your framework should allow to build code without ifs. But on the other hand, different blockchains can say, OK, if it's OK, that's fine. And we will charge more for the storage. Uh, so yeah, so that, that, like, that there is no one gas model. Like, it needs to be adjusted. That's why uh, everything is different uh, and can be optimized for it. Storage layout, how your blockchain stores the memory, so stores the data. Sometimes it's, it's in a just binary format. Sometimes you need to specify additional elements. Sometimes you need to call something before you store, so you're marking what you're storing. And this is like totally different ways of doing that. Uh, the was binary itself can be compiled in different ways. We just seen from the other night uh, that uh, Casper recompiles WASM file to be something else because of the optimization. So, but different blockchains do the different things like that. And even the smart contract life cycle uh, it's different. Some, for example, some blockchains can be upgraded, some, some not, doesn't. Uh, some can be installed automatically, some needs to install themselves. Some uh, smart contracts provide uh, uh, ways to recreate the contract uh, from inside the virtual machine, some doesn't. So, wow. Well, uh, and the example, what, 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 what did I mean by different memory management. When you want to execute WebAssembly, and basically when you're building your blockchain, and you have, uh, 
you need to pick a web uh, WASM virtual machine, you're not building it from scratch these days. You're just taking one of the, the one that's, that's provided by the communities. And for example, different uh, uh, deals differently with the memory. So sometimes you allocate memory and some releases memories, but some, some don't. Uh, and also, yeah, and it depends on how your WASM is, is compiled from the code. And uh, again, uh, what they showed earlier is that the linker itself can change the way your code looks like, your bytecode looks like. So you need to adjust, you need to know what you're actually compiling to uh, that works the best for your virtual machine. And even the, the memory itself uh, can have different flavor in terms of where the data lives. So let's say you want to load some data uh, from the host and one system can uh, give you the whole bytecode, uh, sorry, byte for the data and you can like uh, do stuff with it. For example, that's useful when, you know, when you want to like add two numbers. So you load the whole number, you add it inside WASM and you output the result. But sometimes you just get the, in some systems, you, you get the pointer to the large blob of data and you just define what you want to do and you send to the host the instruction of what you want to do on an on a object that is somewhere there on the host. So, this is all different. So, and another piece, what can be different? When we save, let's say in this, in this example, we are saving uh, to the storage value result of type U32. So there is a number under some key. So how do we represent this key? Igor, how would you represent the key result? Yeah in, key in, yeah, in the key value storage. But like, w how would you build the key for the result? OK, I'll give you the, the hint. So normally, I would, some would create a result string and turn it into bytes, and then store, uh, store this in the key value storage that is available to the smart contract. Uh, but maybe that's not the best choice. Maybe the best choice is to prepend it with the uh, name of the struct, because the different structs also could have a reasonable value in it. Uh, but that's not all, also perfect. So maybe we would like to hash our data, ha hash our key, so it's unified. And for example, someone cannot recreate it easily without knowing the, the code. Uh, but that's long, the, the byte code, oper because this is like building a key uh, happens a lot in your code. Uh, you want to avoid operations at this level as much as possible. So maybe this could be just number one, number two, very static value. And everything should be as static as possible in your smart contract when you're developing, because then compiler helps you and uh, produces you better code, smaller code with less, less operations that needs to happen at runtime. Okay, so what's next? No, actually not, sweat, not what next, where we are. WASM blockchains achieved success. That's, that's like, wow. That five years ago, people were just talking about it. Now we're in the position where there's a multiple blockchains that achieved success. And uh, Rust is the winning ecosystem for, for, for those blockchains because it has really nice tool chains and, it, uh, uh, and it's good at this. And the developer communities like, like ours, there are, a lot, there are a few other communities that, that are really focusing on their ecosystems and they, they, building, they building and we have better and better tools, ideas, ideas sometimes get copy it over to another ecosystems, and that helps everyone. And the performance of WebAssembly improves. Like five years ago, it was a nightmare. Like the, the, the was machines were very slow. These days, we have really nice tricks applied to it, uh, mostly thanks, thanks to WebAssembly, sorry, blockchain developers, because we need it for the faster virtual machines. So 
a uh, lot of money and effort uh, was put into this uh, to, to, to have better, better solutions. Okay, but uh, there are some problems. Uh, and the main problem is that each ecosystem that develops for WebAssembly builds its own tools, builds its own enclave. And that's mostly because, I think that's mostly because of the funding structure. So behind every blockchain there is a foundation that spawns the ecosystem, that, that, that cares about ecosystem, cares about the ecosystem. And they fund projects for their own ecosystem, which makes sense. That's the most cost efficient thing to spin up something quickly. Uh, but the thing is that I think blockchain should be more like browsers where they execute code and the code could be portable from one blockchain to another. And these days with web Rust source code or smart contracts, it's not possible. Uh, simply because all of the things I just showed you that they are like uh, totally different. So how to make it possible? There should be a unification work between those platforms. Uh, and it should be f well funded, I think. That will give us uh, a lot of uh, reusability. And we could start simply with, for example, metadata representation, ABI of contracts, event uh, structures. Uh, we can even try to unify serialization methods or formats between, between blockchains or even or or things like that, uh, and go further with further with this, and maybe even like have similar smart contract life cycles, and then maybe it would, we would get to the point where we where where not the smart contract itself could be like very super similar, but uh, the tooling around it could be similar because it uses the same interfaces. So that would mean just one library in JavaScript that can talk to the blockchain and load the data. Uh, I think that would be nice to have because right now it stops us. We don't have each of this ecosystem doesn't have enough manpower to build large things. I want to see smart contracts that are one million lines of code, uh, like I don't know, running Microsoft Excel on a blockchain inside a virtual machine. But it, it's not impossible because. <laughs> There is no computation power. We do, that's, that's fine. But it's not possible because it's not possible to write this code compactly and really nice quickly because there is no enough abstraction built already. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, what else? Rust is changing. It's not like this is moving, uh, uh, this is moving targets to build for Rust because they introduce new features and sometimes they introduce a feature that can shorten your code, make it faster. And on the other hand, there are features, for example, for the cargo that we're waiting for that would be, for example, dynamic libraries of Rust, uh, in Rust, for those who understand, uh, which it's not possible right now, so better linkers. And this is all happening, but the thing is we need to keep up with this. Uh, someone needs to keep up, and whenever this happens, just, just tell everyone, look guys, we can adjust it do some R&D and, and show. The same with WebAssembly machines. We're getting better and better, but there is still a lot uh, to do. And the thing is, for example, the one I uh, the one wasn't think I, I'm waiting for is component model that allows you to combine multiple uh, WASM files. For example, imagine that you compiling a WASM file uh, and you up, uh, just for abstract blockchain, and you add uh, another WASM file to it that provides the implementation for the communication with the host. So, so that's how it could look like. And that would, for example, uh, shorten the smart uh, the bytecode, and we would be able to send not half megabyte WASMs to the blockchain, but rather uh, 50 kilobytes or something. So that's, that's important. Um, and this one, for solidity to Rust. Uh, there is so much good code in solidity 
that Rust people, Rust developers, are not able to recreate it in Rust and even prove it that it's, it's safe. So the idea is that we should make a solidity, a solidity code, a tool to be used in Rust as a, as a DSL. Imagine like, like inline piece of solidity that could be used inside your Rust code. Uh, and actually this is what we are experimenting right now with. Uh, so, so, so soon we will announce something. And uh, that's it.